you survived the most famous serial killer since Jack the Ripper. The five-year anniversary is coming up. I think a lot of people would really like to hear from you after all this time. You're listening to Fun with Horror with your hosts, Scotty and Andrew. Hey, everybody. I'm Andrew. Hi. I'm Scotty. Oh, no. (laughs) And I'm looking right at you. You are. We're in the same room today. You don't have to yell at me, dude. Sorry. Why why are you yelling at me? I'm right next to you. We're in the same room today. (laughs) We are. We are. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what are we? Let me tell you. This is weird. This is weird, I know. This is different. But what episode is this? Well, we're at we're at episode 136. A Fun with Horror. A Fun with Horror. What is Fun with Horror? We're a podcast where two long-distance best friends keep in touch by giving each other horror movies to watch, and then we discuss them. That's right. And <laughs> last episode, I got to pick the movie. And because Andrew is here in Los Angeles with me and Terrifier 3 opened this weekend. Yes. We went to see it. We did. And this was my next movie because we went to see it because I picked this movie. That's true. And that's how the podcast works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're good. Yeah. Science. We're good. How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Looking at this is it. It is very different, though. I'm stop yelling at me. Gosh, <laughs> you, uh, you're like, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like we're like right next to each other, but Andrew keeps like his voice level just keeps going higher I and think higher. I'm just so used to it because that's just how I talk when we do it when I'm at home. So I will. I need a. I, I'm gonna calm down. Calm the hell calm down. Down. <laughs> My God. I even did because I had like time this morning. I was at a hotel and everything, and like I, I did like yoga and meditation this morning. I like calm down and look at me, look at me. Just did you honest. really? I really did. Yeah, you did yoga and meditation. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, man. Wait, how often do you do yoga and meditation? Not much, because I just don't have a lot of time. But I had some this morning. I was like, I'm gonna do like I need to get back into that, man. Like, wow. So I did. It wasn't like long, but it was nice. I just, yeah, it was nice. That's wonderful. Thanks, man. That is wonderful. Look at that. I don't even know what to talk about now. Honestly. Like, you're right here, and we've been hanging out for a little while. So, everybody, yeah. Andrew, this is we're recording this on Saturday. Yes. Andrew flew in yesterday. I did. You flew in because we are going to Son of Monster Palooza. Yeah, buddy. But yesterday, we just hung out. You mm-hmm. took allergy pills so that my cats didn't kill you. <laughs> and I And another one today. And another one today. Yeah. And then last night we went to see Terrifier 3 with our friend JD. Yes, we did. And we'll talk a little bit about what JD thought of the movie we as will. well as our own thoughts. Definitely. I guess, you know, the one thing we got to say is thank you, everybody, for listening to Fun with Horror. Yes, thank you. We appreciate it. We really do. That would be so cool if we saw anybody at <sighs> Son of Monster Palooza that was like, hey, I see your T-shirts, guys. Yep. I know. Gents. <laughs> we both are wearing our Fun with Horror t-shirts, yeah. so I love it. And where did I take you t- this morning, buddy? <gasps> we went to Horror Vibes ca- Coffee. Excuse coffee. me. Coffee. <laughs> coffee. I was going to say cafe. That's not right. Horror Vibes Coffee in Los Angeles. It's yeah, Man, that place is awesome. It's so cool. I'm glad you liked it. I really did. It's like the murals there. Like whoever, And I even said this to you when we were there. Whoever does their art is phenomenal. Like it's art. Whoever does their Art. art. I should have saved that for a segue. Dang it. Dang it. Terrifier 3? <laughs> <laughs> I saw him today. Who? How can you be sure it was really him? Terrifier 3 was once again written and directed by Damien Leone. It stars once again David Howard Thornton as Art the Clown, Lauren Lavera as Sienna. Elliot Fulham as Jonathan, Antonella Rose as Gabby, Margaret Ann Florence as Jessica, Bryce Johnson as Greg, and once again, Samantha Scafidi as Victoria. Oh, look at that. 
what'd you think of this movie, buddy? <laughs> Without right, spoiling well, yeah, it, of course, so, everybody, yeah. So here's the thing. We just saw this movie last night. Right. This is going to be a little bit different from most of our reviews or discussions in that, you know, we usually have time to take some notes. I try to watch bonus features and stuff, but this is mostly going to be, uh, you know, just from watching it last night, going from memory and just talking about the movie. Right. So we're not going to spoil it right away. Mm-hmm. We'll let you know before we get into spoiler territory. Nice. So what did I think of Terrifier yeah. 3? What are your thoughts, man? So my immediate reaction because mm-hmm. i'm honestly still mulling this movie over right and strangely enough this movie sat with me mm-hmm. longer than i expected it to wow okay okay i really liked this movie a lot okay i think in the pantheon of terrifier films uh-huh i think i put it just below terrifier 2 okay and okay. terrifier 1 being just below this one okay i thought it was a really good movie i really enjoyed the lore and mm-hmm. the story with Sienna and all that. And right. a lot of that, we're going to get into talking about arts kills because that's a major element of these movies. <laughs> yeah. And this is what I want to talk about, which is, and it's kind of hard to say, man. Okay. So I like the kills a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. We went with our friend JD. Yes, we did. And even though you and I did not talk about what we thought of the movie because we wanted to leave it, we we never tell each other what we thought of a movie until we record. Correct. Like right now, we're finding out what yeah. you what each other thought of this movie for real. Very true. But JD told us that he really enjoyed the lore. Right. But that he thought the kills got kind of boring just because it's the same extreme thing over and over. Right. right? Yep. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Okay. But I do get the feeling that it was not – so it wasn't too much as in too gory or too extreme for me. Right. Like I could handle everything. Right. But there is a point. Like you need to have an ebb and a flow. You need to have a peak and then other things. I I am so bad at putting what my feelings were into words but hey. it okay so the kills felt too much like there was too much right right but only because it's like after a while you're like okay right like we get it right mm-hmm. you're really good at special effects damien right you're amazing right and we get it that art is a sadistic crazy entity right i don't need you to try and top yourself with every single sequence right Agreed. you know yeah and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that. Yeah, they will. So we're going to get into it in more specifics. Mm-hmm. But what did you think of it? I agree with what you said. I think, yeah, the kills were, it was a lot. And it wasn't too extreme for me. I just was I, the same thing where I'm just like, okay, I get it. Let's move on. Like, I get it. I'm I'm kind of bored with this. Or I'm just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Again, I, I agree with both you and JD. Like, the lore is kind of cool. I do think that this movie was about an hour too long, and overall, I didn't like it. Wow. There you go. Overall, you did not like it. I did not like this movie. Wow. Yeah, man. What did you think of Terrifier 2? I thought 1 and 2 were fine. Okay. They're fine. These are not the movies that I are in my wheelhouse of like, oh, I can't wait to watch every Halloween. These are the ones where I'm like, one's good. I'm good watching it once, and I think I'm done. Just not your thing? No. It just is too... And again, like, it's, yeah, the kills are crazy, and it's not like I'm sitting here going, like, oh, my gosh, I can never watch this. It's too extreme or whatever. It's just, like, it's more too over the top almost. Like, I'm just like, okay, guys, let's let's get on with it. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, I'd much rather you pop in an 80s horror slasher. That's my baby. That's what I'm going to go to on Halloween. You put these in, I'm I'm good. I watched them once. That's all I really need to see. Wow. There you go. Wow. Yeah, buddy. I know. I knew <laughs> I knew this was going to be a, an interesting talk last night after hearing just what JD was kind of talking about in the car. And yeah. then I could tell that you were – not what you were saying. I could just tell that you definitely had some enjoyment with things. And I was like, I know we are going to disagree on this one. Like it hit me on the drive home. I was like, yep, we're going to disagree. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, buddy. Well, that's a great movie to be talking about in person. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good because then we can we can 
we can <laughs> ow 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 scotty hit me um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good though because then we can have this conversation in person. It's nice because we can have like the it's a nice the ebbs and flows. It's a nice, hey, uh, it's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice amitabola. Requiesca de pace. Oh, it's your auditore da Firenze. So next on Assassin's Creed, <laughs> it's the only Italian I know Ugh. from a video game. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so well, let's move on to the next part. Yes, which is that we are now. This that's it. <laughs> we are now going to spoil Terrifier 3. Yes. This is interesting because I'm going to have some questions for you. But first, mm-hmm. we've got to do our three-minute recap. Oh, boy. All right. So let me get my virtual 20-sided dice out. And now I can finally see that you actually do it. Because... Oh, I never I never yeah. cheat. I know. I'm teasing you. Or else you would have been doing... Like it, it, it's interesting. <laughs> you have been doing a lot lately. <laughs> I have, and you were doing a lot, and it's been like on a roll. Yeah. Also, everybody, full disclosure: we have on a, a, a on Shutter, they have the pumpkin, the ghoul log, the ghoul log, which is the just a pumpkin sitting there with a candle in it. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It is nice, and then like yeah, just a couple little background noises of you know creepy sounds. It's yeah, it definitely sets the sets the tone. Has a nice atmosphere. All right, Andrew, I am rolling the 20-sided die. If it's odd, yeah. you're doing it. If it's even, I'm doing it. So you tell me when to stop. Stop? Yes, it's a 10. <laughs> oh, I was, because honestly, you. I, I am was, a 10. You are a 10. You're, you know what? <laughs> if this was Spinal Tap, you're an 11. Oh, oh, a Spinal Tap joke. Oh, yeah. It's or a reference. Not a joke, but a reference. A okay, reference. anyway. Anyway. Oh, I'm so glad you're doing this. I would not have known what to say. I don't really, yeah, we'll see how I do. You'll do great. Because this is no notes at all. I haven't taken any notes. Did you take notes? I have like just a couple things. Just, I didn't, but I didn't write crazy. anything. So nice. this is going to be fun. Well, just heads up. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. You have three minutes. And I did, since I'm here in LA, I actually found the real Art the Clown who apparently lives here. David? Not the actor, the real Art the Clown <laughs> killer. Oh, it's uh, a true story? Is, yeah. <laughs> you, did you not? Man, you did not take notes. Yeah, this is based on true story. Uh, I did let him know that you have three minutes, and if not, he's going to up the ante, if you will, on your death. So <laughs> let's hope you do. Also, my through. cat is on the table, <laughs> and I hope she doesn't step on the laptop and oh, stop no. this recording. <laughs> that would be hi, Bowie. I'm yeah, I'm in person, so I get to see both Bowie and Ziggy. Hey, Bowie. Bowie's All right. sniffing me right now. You ready? Yes. Are you? Yes. Sorry. Bowie, don't. <gasps> She actually did step on the laptop. <laughs> That's did. amazing. It was. It did stop everything. I don't think anybody <laughs> could tell. I don't know. No, it looks good. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow, boy. She just right after part we, of it. Right after we said, yep. I hope she doesn't step on the laptop, Bowie the cat stepped on the laptop. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at her, though. Aww. Are you ready? Can we do this podcast? Yeah, sorry. Gosh. Go. <laughs> I know. It's so weird being in person. I know. Tangents. I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of play time. Terrifier 3 takes place five years after Terrifier 2, which, yeah, we already did the spoiler warning. Okay, sorry. He just whispered at me. Like, like, before you were yelling at me, now you're whispering at me. I can't find the <laughs> levels, man. I can't do it. Just talk to me like like I'm here. Talk to me? We did that movie. <laughs> yeah. Plug, plug. <sighs> sorry, go ahead. Terrifier 3. I'm going to edit all that out. Okay. Terrifier 3 takes place Five years after Terrifier 2, it takes place around Christmas time. It opens up with Art killing a family on Christmas. That's all I'm going to say about that right now, because the main bulk of the movie deals with Sienna. After surviving Terrifier 2, she gets out of a mental hospital, and she is staying with her aunt and uncle, Yes, I believe. Yep. Yeah, because the other person in that house is her niece, Gabby. Meanwhile, Art and uh, Victoria, Victoria now has, is like this demon girl following him around, much like the little demon girl in episode or Terrifier 2. Art and Victoria had ended up in this decrepit house, which was really cool because Art sat in this rocking chair and Victoria laid down in a bathtub of water and slit her wrists. And then Art just sat there smiling. Five years later, some demolition guys come into the house, and they are still in the exact same spots. 
It's amazing. Art is covered in webs, but as you can guess, him and Victoria both wake up and kill the two guys um, unmercifully, if that's the right word. Art then begins his rampage of terror. We have scenes in which he goes to a bar where there's a guy dressed as Santa Claus, Daniel Roebuck, Mm -hmm. along with Clint Howard. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I'm not sure who the bartender is right now. Anyway, uh, Art kills all three of them, and, I mean, he destroys them. And then he dresses up as Santa Claus. He ends up at a mall where he sits in Santa Claus's chair when Santa Claus is on a break. And as kids come up, he gives them all these toys, and then he walks away, and one of the kids is opening up a bomb, and the bomb kills everybody that's up on the Santa stage. Eventually, uh, Sienna has been talking to her brother, Jonathan, and they've been talking about how the key to killing Art, it seems like, is the girl, the little girl, who is now Victoria. They have to destroy her because that is the evil entity. That's going along with art. Bowie, please don't step on my laptop again. Yeah, so things happen. Uh, Sienna sees art. Some people think she's going crazy. There's also, uh, we've got Jonathan's roommate who has a girlfriend, and she has a podcast. We know how those go. Yes. You know, the problem with podcasts is everybody thinks that they know everything. It's true. I know. Why even have one? (laughs) Stupid podcasts. Anyway, this girl wants to interview Jonathan. She also wants to interview Sienna when she sees Sienna in a mall or somewhere, wherever they are, maybe on campus. But guess what? Art ends up coming into the school and killing her and her boyfriend in a spectacular shower scene, which we'll talk about. Art eventually ends up at Sienna's house. You know, I'm just skipping a lot because... Honestly, that's how the movie feels in a way. These things are happening, and then suddenly Art is in Sienna's house with Victoria. And then Art knocks out Sienna, ties her to a chair, and then she's got her aunt across from her. Her uncle is now hung up on the wall, decapitated with his guts hanging out of his stomach. Maybe should have trigger warning this episode too, but oh well. Yeah, It's Terrifier 3. People at this point... I feel like she kind of know what they're getting into. Uh, Yeah, so there's a fight, but it turns out that Sienna had gone back to the Terrifier ride from part two, and she got the sword, and Gabby gives her the sword, and then there's a big fight. Sienna cuts off the head of Victoria, who starts to melt into the floor, and then she's got this knockdown fight with Art the Clown. They fight. Sienna basically wins that fight, but there's a moment where she's killing Art, and she's got a choice between saving Gabriella, who is falling into the pits of hell. Yeah, we'll talk about that, too. (laughs) Or killing Art. So she chooses to save Gabriella, and guess what? She actually doesn't save her. Art escapes, and Gabriella still falls into the pits of hell. And that's basically the end there, except for Art ending up on a bus, bleeding, and looking at a girl on the bus who's reading a book called The Ninth Circle. The end. Just under three minutes, buddy. I mean, just <laughs> under. So Thanks to Bowie. Thanks to Bowie. <laughs> so Art won't come here, um, but he probably still will at some point because yeah. he's unpredictable. He's unpredictable. He's unpredictable. Yeah, he's just, he's just chaos. He, that's all he is. <laughs> okay, here's the question that's burning in my mind, buddy. Um... No, I, I said, here's the question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm about to ask answer. you. That means I'm going to ask you something? Oh, okay. I was going to answer. I was going to say probably 32, <laughs> but I wasn't sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, seriously. This, yeah, is, okay. this is like throughout the entire movie, this is what I was wondering. Okay. Everybody that listens to us uh-huh. knows that my kryptonite in horror movies is animal deaths. Yes. Especially if they're done poorly. Right. Your kryptonite mm-hmm. is... Kids, right. children. Right, getting hurt, yep. Art kills many children in this movie. <laughs> he does. How'd you feel about it? I mean, it is it is what it is, but I will say the way they did it wasn't so... Because, like, he kills the, you know, boy at the beginning, but we don't see it. Yeah. And then we, like, later see the pieces, and I'm like, all right, well, it's fake. And then, I mean, obvi- <laughs> obviously, but it looked, I don't know. To me, I was like, okay. Uh, and no, then, it did. It did look real. 
Like, Damien does a great job. Yeah, I guess. I mean, but it looked fake to me. I don't know. Because you know it's fake. But it looked right. like those look like actual body yeah. limbs. Yeah. And then later, when the bomb goes off, again, same thing. You just you don't really see it. You see, like, body parts and stuff. And I was like, all right. That's whatever. So it wasn't... Honestly, I even thought this. Because like, at the beginning, the little girl hides... And she's like uh, five, six. I don't know. She's little. Six. Probably I would six, say six. Yeah. yeah. I'm like sitting there. Kind. Of, I was dreading the beginning because I'm like, shoot, there's a kid. Like, and I'm thinking these movies go extreme. If we see him like hurt a kid and actually see it, I don't think I'm gonna do this. Like, I was. I in my mind, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna watch this. Like, I might go out to the lobby because I don't want to see a kid get hurt. And when they didn't do that, I was like, okay. Like, so I'm. I'm hoping that he. I don't know, maybe there's a line for him or something where he's like, eh, maybe we won't show a kid getting yeah, like actually yeah. tortured, which, good, don't. But what he did, I mean, honestly, we just see the aftermath, and to me it wasn't horrible. Like, I was like, okay. Okay. So, yeah. Good. I'm yeah. glad. I know, I was really dreading that beginning, though, when I saw the kid, I was like, dang it. Damien Leone established in the very first trailer. Yeah. The teaser trailer that art does not discriminate against children. Right. He will kill anybody. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I was dreading it for you. Yeah, I was really, I was, I mean, seriously, I was nervous. Like, I was like, please don't show a kid getting tortured to death. Please. I'm sure if you see an animal in a movie, Hmm. or like a dog or a cat, because there's animals in this movie, which we'll talk about, but when you see a dog or a cat in a movie, I'm sure you're, like, nervous for me. Oh, yeah, for sure. When it's one of our movies. Yeah, because, I mean, it's that thing where they, like, zoom up on it, and you're like, oh, Something bad's going to happen to this cat, this yeah, dog, this yeah. kid, whatever. So definitely. Oh, yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure the same thing. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Yay. What I'll say, and this goes into more detail about what I was talking about during the non-spoiler right. portion earlier. I honestly, when I think about it, I thought the beginning, the opening scene with the family at Christmas and the house, I thought that was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. But when I think about this movie, I just, there's no reason for that scene. Absolutely. I thought the same thing. There's no callback to it later in the movie. Nope. It's just a scene to establish that this happens at Christmas. Mm -hmm. When I would have rather the movie opened with the end of part two. I would agree. Like, I think you cut that opening scene, you have a tighter movie, Mm -hmm. and then you're, you're starting right in with the cop walking through the terrifier and seeing art the clown's decapitated body right which then proceeds to attack the cop right. and take the cop's head <laughs> yes which yeah that part uh yeah that was fun that was funny well and, and see i thought the same thing because i go oh we're definitely gonna see that little girl again like maybe she's gonna be or and then i thought maybe that's because I, I had forgotten that it was like five years later or whatever so i was like oh maybe that's her cousin when she was lit i didn't know so I'm like, we're definitely going to see that girl again, and we never yeah. do. So, no, yeah, we never I, do. I agree. I was like, okay. But there is a reason for that, and we don't know everything yet, but the reason for that is because that little girl was the demon entity who is now Victoria. What? No, the girl at the beginning of... Oh, oh, you're talking about the little girl? No, yeah, Art no. killed her. No, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just... Yeah. <laughs> I just was like, maybe if she... This was before he killed her. I'm like, oh, this will come back later. Like, she's going to live and help Sienna or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. But... but that would no. have been amazing if that little girl burst through the door at the end of the movie with an axe in her hand. Right, or something. Like, yeah, I just was, like, expecting her, but then he kills her. So I was like, well, that's... Yeah, I know. All right. Yeah, there's no reason for the beginning. That's nope. that's That's my final say. <laughs> <laughs> but here... So, then again, like... I really did think about this movie last night Mm. after we saw it. And I really think that, God, the movie just would have been better altogether without that opening scene. Yeah. Because then I don't feel like it would have felt like too much. Right. With the kills. Because then what what kills do you have? You have the building inspectors, the demolition guys. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. And then you have the guys in the bar. Yeah. You kind of have art blowing up everybody but that wasn't even that that wasn't even that gruesome it was so quick yeah it was quick it was just an explosion and then you see like body parts body parts and guts yeah you know and then you have the shower yes <laughs> yeah and I, let me tell you about the shower go for uh, it i forget who said it if it was david howard thornton or lauren lavera but somebody was like mention the terrifier two bedroom scene right yeah oh, gosh yeah 
and they were like, well, you're never going to look at the sh- uh, shower the same way, you know? <laughs> and I was, so the moment it showed those two in the shower, the yeah. two, the couple, I was dreading what was about to happen. Right. Which right. is great. Like that was the best advertising on social media. Oh, very much. They have. knew what they were doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, and then you have the whole climax in the in the living room, right? Which honestly was very effective to me. Mm-hmm. For me, right? I was very nervous that whole time. Yeah, that's fair for many different reasons. Yep. Because okay, here for me the 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 way that Terrifier two and three truly succeed for me. Okay. Is that they introduced characters that I absolutely care about. Like, I care about Sienna. Right. It would kill me if they killed off Sienna. Fair. Jonathan, while slightly annoying in <laughs> Terrifier 2, I grew to really like his character uh-huh. over time after rewatching 2 a couple times. Okay. So I was really happy to see him in this movie. Yeah, I agree. That was cool to see him. Yep. I would absolutely agree with that. Now, one of the questions this movie leaves, yeah. Andrew, is, is Jonathan dead? I mean, I, yeah, I did wonder that, too, because he, I mean, he's a main character, really, through this, or at least through two and three. He's a, a big character, a, really a main character in two, and they, quote unquote, kill him off screen. Right. So we don't know, because they put the glasses on the decapitated skull <laughs> with some meat on it. As if it's her brother. But again, as a somewhat main character, I feel like, mm, we didn't see it. And that's kind of a main character. I feel like that would be something that we would see. I could see it both ways, yeah. Right, that's the thing. Yeah. I could see it both ways. I could see it where Art is absolutely sadistic enough to kill Jonathan. Right, yeah. I could see it as killing Jonathan, but Damien being smart enough to know that Jonathan is a character that people really like and it would right. maybe hurt the movie to watch Jonathan die. Right. I don't know. But then I could also see it as them putting somebody's skull in this cage at the end of the movie. Right. And tricking Sienna. Right. Into thinking it's Jonathan. Right. I yeah. I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't know about you, but I kind of expected to see Jonathan like bust into the house near the end to help them <laughs> so i i thought that well i mean i would have thought that i should say but like i kind of i briefly mentioned it to you earlier we see in the living room kind of in the climax the end of the movie a head on top of the tree yeah and that's the uncle but to yeah. me it actually kind of looked like uh the brother what's what's, what's jonathan. jonathan excuse me so f- when we saw that i was like oh jonathan's dead yeah and then they kind of do the reveal that the skull in this cage was Jonathan. I was like, well, didn't I know he's up on the, like his skin is up on the tree. So to me, it wasn't like a, I don't know. I was like, yeah, he's, that's him, I guess. But that's the uncle. So, oh, oh, Andrew. So to me, I was like, all right, he's dead. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it looked like him for a bit. Like then they kind of zoom in on it. And so to me, I was like, oh, Jonathan. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah, no, that was definitely the uncle. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like. And as I, uh, this is one thing we did kind of talk about earlier. Mm. And as I said, that was one of the great things about that scene to me is mm. because you see the the uncle's body, right, right, nailed up to the wall, right, and then you see this package with a blood at the bottom of it sitting there in front of uh, Sienna, right, and then Sienna's aunt, and then when they when Art points at the head and i realized that was the uncle that gave me a feeling of dread okay whose head is in this package and i will say that's one brilliant thing about what damien did with art and Mm. these movies is that i honestly thought it could be gabby the little girl well they and yeah that was kind of the rope of dope they did try and convince us that that was yeah the head so but i i don't know part of me did not think that though like I, I mean, obviously they say it, sir. But I was like, and I was like, oh, but I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't think it is. Like it just kind of hmm. doesn't feel right. <laughs> like that's not her. So I felt the same way. I just, I mean, but that's partly I didn't want them to kill the little girl. Right. Okay. It seemed like there was some black hair at the back of the skull, uh. which is also why I think it might not be Jonathan. Ah, I'm trying to think now who would be like who. Uh, just anybody. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious though if there was like someone that we 
I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> what? How do you feel about Sienna? I do like her. I okay. like Sienna. I think she's a cool character. I think she's a really cool final girl. I liked in. I mean, I guess. I mean, we're kind of spoiling two anyway. So we'll, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen Terrifier one and two, we're probably going to spoil some stuff from those. Yeah. So here we go. At the end of two, I mean, I love, I kind of love that sequence of her getting the wings and like the armor and the sword. And I was like, oh, that's a, that's cool. Like, that's a fun final girl moment we really haven't seen, you know? So I was like, that's cool. I really like that. And so when they kind of brought that back, I was like, oh, I'm on board for some of that lore. Like, I like the, the, you know, I mean, good versus evil. That's great. And I really, I actually really liked this. There was one scene I really liked, which was the sequence of, the Virgin Mary statue holding the demon or whatever you want to call it, building the armor. And it was like, he was forced to do it by good. Like you got to build this armor for uh, Sienna. I I thought that scene was actually cool. And I like yeah. that the, the Virgin Mary statue kind of moved to in like a really interesting way. And I even saw at the end, like someone else, I think directed that scene. Cause it said the, like direct you know uh virgin mary scene or something like that i can't remember directed by blah blah blah, blah or whatever and i was like oh that's cool like that's kind of cool because i really i thought that scene was effective i was like that's a cool thing to make the evil create this armor that's gonna stop the evil yeah i liked it so i, I yeah again just kind of jumping back to sienna like i like that she's sort of this entity of good and i do like her so <laughs> long story short yes i like sienna oh good <laughs> Yeah, and that's something I, I was actually going to ask you, so thank you for reminding me. I was going to ask you what you thought of the biblical parallels that the movie was making. I kind of, I actually liked it, because I thought of, because I mean, um, art is the embodiment of evil. Art is the embodiment of evil. Yeah. He is, I mean, the devil, he's cruel, he's a demon, he's whatever you want to call it. I mean, I he's from hell, <laughs> truly, you yeah. know, like, I mean, they kind of almost say that. And I like that, kind of the good being like this angel haha um taking on the fight you know sort of but i i feel like they went a bit further right. with very christ like depictions of sienna true they I did mean, crown of thorns right in terrifier 2 you have the sword in in her side in mm -hmm. her side well i think in in terrifier 2 is closer to the middle of her stomach mm. and of course jesus was stabbed in the side right but yeah, I mean, you did have these depictions, and of course you have her uncle hanging crucified right. on the wall. Right. But I looked at that, though, as, you know, what, whatever you want to say about de like in, demons in movies and stuff, they always are kind of, not always, but a lot of times they're almost mocking yeah. God, Jesus, they're mocking yeah. religion, Christianity. And so, like, I looked at that as, yeah, they're demons that are mocking Christianity. That's, that makes sense. They're not going to sit there and be like, oh... God is cool. <laughs> They're going to mock it. They're going to mock him. So, but they don't, do you think they realize that when they put the crown on Sienna, mm -hmm. that they're making her into like their antithesis, the thing that can kill them? I looked at it more as they're mocking both her and Jesus. Like they're like, look at, at you. Time. We've, we've, we've won. And oh, you're the new, you know, savior. And yet here we are winning. You know, it was almost like a spit in the face. Okay. So I didn't look at it as them. I just looked at it as them making fun of both of them, just saying like we won, like you look at you, we we got you. But I like that it was almost when she does kind of kick butt that she has it as like a, I was like oh cool, all right, yeah. She's like the the embodiment of good during this evil fight. So I I was I looked at it more like it wasn't she didn't do it, she wasn't the one that put it on. It was them doing it to mock her, but she's using it against them for good. So I I liked that. I thought that was kind of. Cool. Also, the cuts in her hands. That ah, were very good. Somewhat yeah. stigmata ish. Yep. And then healing, which yeah. was, yeah. Yeah. Which I'm very glad they showed the healing because there is a part near the end where her arm, her hands and wrists are pummeled yeah, yeah. by a, art. He, a mallet. Yeah. He hits her hands with a mallet and just kind of cripples her. For sure. Then there's this big sword fight against art with a chainsaw and. <laughs> Part of my mind was going, how is she able to wield this sword so well? But right. then we're shown that she's healing. Right. Which right. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Again, very, yeah, supernatural, like, things going on. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, even with hell opening up, I mean, there's there's a lot of, 
there's a lot of that. I audibly gasped. So as we said, <laughs> as we said, Sienna beheads Victoria, who is this entity. And let's get into this a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. There's some lore here. Well, there's some lore. Uh, there's a note that Sienna gets, and I can't remember if it was from Jonathan because, honestly, we had some idiots talking in our theater Ugh. that ended up causing a distraction at the most important point exposition scene in the movie. Yeah. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Right. I will say it was nice of JD to tell them to stop yeah. uh, and be respectful of Our others. friend told them to be quiet, and they did. Yeah. But there was a note... And I think Jonathan wrote it. I can't, I'm not sure who wrote it or Sienna wrote it. Anyway, it's been established that the little clown girl in Terrifier 2 is a demonic entity. Right. Who at some point possessed Victoria. Right. So yes. Victoria is now this demonic entity. Yeah. And then near the end of Terrifier 3, we find out that they're trying to break Sienna down and make her weak enough that this demonic entity can get a new body right right so yeah uh, i mean it's not really much more to it than that no i mean it makes but i i feel like we've seen that kind of like it makes sense we've seen that in other th movies with possessions or or we want to see people worn down or broken down because it's easier to take over yeah. when they're when they have no hope when they have no exactly so that makes sense yeah and i, I was just thinking about in Terrifier 2, and we do see the little girl. It's only Art that sees her. Elliot also sees her? I mean, Jonathan? Right, I guess. But at the beginning, when we see her in like the laundromat, there's another guy looking over, and there's nothing yeah, there. Yeah, so yeah. I was, I, 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 yeah. Most people can't see her, but Jonathan right. is able to see her, and I believe Sienna can see her at one point. But I like that because that kind of shows that she is like this, I don't know, demon or whatever you want to call her, this entity that. Yeah. Is otherworldly. You yeah, know what I mean? For sure. So I like that. I, that makes, that's cool. I just, that kind of clicked a second ago. I was like, oh, nice. Okay. And actually, I'm cool. not sure if Sienna ever sees her in, in Terrifier 2. I don't remember. But Jonathan sees her. So Jonathan and Sienna are connected that way. Right. But yeah, so Sienna decapitates Victoria and her blood becomes <laughs> pretty like, like acid. Yeah. And starts burning a hole in the floor. And I'm sitting there just thinking, Oh no, Gab Gabby is in the middle of all this acid, and once again, Gabby is Sienna's niece because I know we're just her cousin niece. How's Definitely that work? Because aunt and uncle, That'd be her cousin. aunt and uncle have a daughter, and that would be her niece. That'd be her cousin. It's but she did, she did Garden. call her niece. Yeah, you're right. She does say that so. at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, how's my niece doing? Blah blah blah. Gabby is surrounded by this acid, and I'm like, oh no. She's going to fall through the floor into the basement. I thought the same thing. And then suddenly that floor opens up and it's hell. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, I audibly gasped in the theater. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yep. No, I, yeah, I, I, I had that exact same thought was she's going to fall and, you know, down to the basement, break an arm, get, can, you know, pass out or whatever. But yeah, I was like, oh, okay, we're doing a whole different thing here. <laughs> it's not that different because if you think about it, a uh, portal to hell was opened in Terrifier 2. I meant different than what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, even with Terrifier 2, like it made sense to me after I right. thought about it. But yeah, I was still, I was like, whoa. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I agree. Andrew. Scotty. We talked about Sienna. What did you think of art? <laughs> Here we go. Here's where I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to lose listeners. Here's where people are going to hate me. Um, I don't like art. I think, here we go. So art to me, one, I don't like art because he's so evil. And and we kind of discussed this a little bit yesterday where you had mentioned, you know, that we saw someone with like an art t-shirt. Yeah. And you were like, I don't know if I can wear like an art t-shirt. Like it's it's different when you wear like a Michael Myers t-shirt because it's kind of straightforward. It's a slasher. It's how he kills. Some of them are pretty unique, but like art tortures, art Art gets off. He's sadistic. On. He's sadistic. And it's, so it's kind of hard to be like almost not representing him, but, you know, wearing something where you're like, oh, what a cool movie. No, I th I'm pretty sure we talked about this in our Terrifier 2 episode. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. I'm just bringing it up last night because we yeah. did bring it up again. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, it's the same. Like, I don't like even, um, you know, I have like like uh, 
Like if I were, if I were to have some like horror figurines, I don't really want an art the clown horror figurine. I know you have one, but <laughs> I I don't like I don't I'm not sure I want that in my like because I'm like eh, he's not he's a bad guy like he's really bad and I don't really like that. Not only that, and here's where I'm probably gonna get in trouble, and maybe you'll edit this out. I don't know because we don't want to offend, but art to me is very over the top, and he's meant to be. He's yeah. meant to be over the top. But he's too much for me. So all those facial expressions that he does, I'm like, okay, move along, man. Like, I am so done with this. Him be like, giving these big, goofy grins. And then, oh, I'm sad now. And, oh, I'm happy now. And, oh, I'm being silly. He's a mime. I, I get it. Yeah. Too much for me, man. Like, I'm sitting there going like, yeah, so You don't like okay. mimes is what you're saying. I guess. <laughs> I guess. But he just, I don't know. And it's nothing against the actor. It's not. I'm not trying. I know that's what he's supposed to be doing. And so I'm not trying to say he's a bad actor. He's not. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is that over-the-topness is too much for me. And maybe that's, I mean, we can go back to Psycho Gorman if we really want. Maybe that's part of why I don't like it. Oh, my God. Yeah, I brought it up. I don't care. I'm I'm looking you in the eye as I sit. Psycho I'm looking Gorman. away. Yeah, you are. I'm looking at the ghoul log on the TV. Good. Uh, Psycho Gorman. <laughs> Well, whatever. Anyway, we will revisit that at some point. That is a promise. But we're never uh, going to revisit that. I do want to. And I think it <laughs> at maybe for Patreon, we'll talk about it anyway. So for me, yeah, I just I couldn't like it was just so much. But by the end, I was like getting a headache watching him. So I'm like, get OK. OK. Over the top. OK. Thank you. I get what you're trying to Did do. Did you feel like this in Terrifier too? Yeah, a bit. But this one, I just feel like it was. So much that I was just like, I'm done. Like, I'm done with this. <laughs> like, I really... So I'll I be re- doing Terrifier 4 by myself. Honestly, maybe. Like, I just am like, I'm done with this, like, series, dude. It's just too much. And again, it's not the extreme blood and gore. It's that they just kind of keep doing it. I'm not sitting there going like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I saw it. I'm like, okay, I saw it again. Okay. And All now right. he's over the top about the kill. Okay. I'm done, dude. <laughs> like, I just am... Ugh. Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I I very much disagree about art. Please. Uh, I don't disagree with everything. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a conversation you and I had mm-hmm. where I was saying art has now he's becoming one of the big iconic slashers. Right. Whether you like it or not. No, I know. Oh, I know. He's becoming as big as Freddy, Jason, Leatherface, Chucky, all of them. He's getting there. He's got his own niche cut out because he is so extreme, right. way more extreme than they are. And I actually love what David Howard Thornton is able to do with art without dialogue. Like all those. Okay, so let's talk about the big ones. Okay. And the one I think about the most is Freddie. Okay. You right. know, Freddie has all of his one liners, right. his quips. Yes. Art is doing the same thing, but with facial expressions. You okay. know, and he's doing it's almost also the same kind of progression in the movies to me. Whereas in Nightmare on Elm Street one, Freddie was scarier. He was more serious. Agreed. Yep. Whereas in Nightmare on Elm Street two and so <laughs> on and so forth, he, he started to get more funny and silly. True. Art was the same way. If you watch Terrifier one, he still has some smiles, but it's more creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he is a. Uh, he's he's a darker presence right whereas in terrifier 2 he started to get some humor and some comedy that kind of thing right and now in this movie it's even more so yeah. you know so i really enjoy that part of it okay i laugh a lot hmm. when he does that but like you said i could have an action figure i don't mind having an action figure right 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 but I don't want to wear T-shirts with Art the Clown on them mm-hmm. because he is a little bit too cruel right. and sadistic for me. Right. Like, he is a scary person because he has no boundaries. He has no borders. Right. And I appreciate that about the movies. I'm not saying I don't like that about the movies. Right. I'm just not going to dress up as Art the Clown. In fact, I no offense to anybody that likes to dress up as Art the Clown, mm-hmm. but to me, it's almost almost akin to dressing up as a serial killer right for halloween yep you're dressing up as somebody who is just cruel and mean Mm -hmm. i'll bring up something that did happen last night in the theater please 
about 20 minutes into the movie, some the people behind us, they came in late, and the one guy was dressed as a bloody Art the Clown, and mm-hmm. he had a mask and everything. And you didn't even see it right away. You were just like, oh, these people walking behind us. And I was like, look at them, look. Yeah. You know, because I thought it was cool at first. Right. This guy turned out to be an a hole. Yeah. But I thought it was cool at first, like somebody dressed up. But at the same time, if somebody came in dressed as Jason or Freddy mm-hmm. in a Jason or Freddy movie, I probably wouldn't have a second thought about it. Right. I'd just be like, oh, that's fun. Mm hmm. A guy comes into a theater dressed as Art the Clown at a Terrifier 3 screening. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I'm seeing headlines in the paper the next day. Man dressed as Art the Clown kills a number of people Podcasters. in Southern California theater. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. So it made me nervous. I was like, wow. And I will say that's that's kind of a compliment to Damien and this character he's created. That He's created a character that can make people nervous. Right. I had the same feeling actually last night because I, when you pointed them out, I was like, yeah, they're late. <laughs> it was what I thought you were saying, like 20 minutes late, guys, really? And so I was like, yeah, totally. And you're like, no, look. And then I saw that he was dressed as art. And I I had the same panic where I went, uh oh, like we're right in front of this dude that yeah. could, who's wearing a mask. No one knows who this guy is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. he could easily slit our throat. Like, I really, that was my initial thought was he's going to come behind us, could easily slit our throat and walk out. Yeah, because if somebody thinks Art is cool enough to dress up as him right. to a movie, like, how far do they go in idolizing this character? Exactly. So I, and that's I, a little scary. It is scary. I genuinely was like, oh, great, my one trip to come and see you and I die. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, what a, sorry, family. Um, but, uh, so... But but mm-hmm. that's just dressing up as art. Like I don't personally, I don't want to wear a Terrifier T-shirt with art on it. Right. Probably. I don't know. I don't. I just wouldn't dress up as art ever. Right. Right. Uh, I know you don't, but you also don't like the character at all. I don't. Like I I do like the character. I think he's a very good horror movie villain. Oh man, this conversation. This is great. I know. Hey, this I know. This is actually really nice doing this one. See in in person too. Look at that. Ah, uh, so yeah. I think we said about all we can about this. Otherwise, we're just beating a dead horse like Art does. <laughs> no, he beats dead people. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So that's Art. That's Art. <laughs> Let's talk about some of these kills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And then, Here and then I think. This. After that, we'll jump into three questions, if, Perfect. unless we think of anything else. But real quick, I do want to talk about, before we get into the kills, let's talk about the music, because oh, yeah, yeah. Paul Wiley has done the music score for all three movies, and I think he's really good. Yeah. There's no Terrifier theme that, I mean, there is a Terrifier theme, mm-hmm. but it's not like a theme like the Nightmare on Elm Street theme, where right. I heard it in this movie, I was like, oh, it's the Terrifier theme. Right. Yep. It's more like a mood that he sets with the music. Yep. But I also just want to give a shout out because not too long ago, I followed this guy. He's from Australia. I don't know his real name, but he's his name is Dream Kid. Mm-hmm. He's very, very well known on social media and TikTok and Instagram for doing these short synth wave videos where he's like he, he names some type of 80s movie thing what was that what was that bowie (gasps) that was bowie ladies and gentlemen yeah so he does these synth wave things and he's he's a synth wave music artist and i he's in my opinion one of the best awesome i love listening to his music and not too long ago he announced that they put his song and his music in terrifier 3 very cool and i totally recognized it because i know what he sounds like and also there was a dream kid poster in elliot's room Nice. Or, God, I keep calling him Elliot because that's the actor. (laughs) But Jonathan's room. Right. Yeah. Also, this has nothing to do with the movie, but Elliot Fulham is also an accomplished indie musical artist. The kid who plays Jonathan, and I really like his music. So go listen listen to him as well. Good for him. That's awesome. Very big Elliot Smith vibes, if, if you all out there know who Elliot Smith is. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring up the music briefly. Ice Nine Kills also did a song, mm-hmm. 
which is very cool because <laughs> back when I met Spencer, yeah, he mentioned that they were in the studio creating a song about Terrifier. Very cool. And That's this is cool. this is the song. So it's not in the movie, but it's called A Work of Art, and I think the video just came out. Awesome. That's really cool. So let's talk about some of the kills. We don't have to talk about all of them. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> now, this is a question I have for you. This is interesting to me. Okay. The thing that gets me about Art's kills is, yeah, obviously it's special effects. Right. Obviously it's makeup. Right. But Damien depicts these kills in a way that feels more visceral and real than mm. most horror movie kills to me. And that's what really impresses me about the kills in these movies. Mm -hmm. When Art hits somebody with an axe... Right. In any other movie, the axe either gets embedded in somebody's back or it immediately chops off a limb. Right. But with art, like, the axe does damage to the body. And you see this visceral, bloody damage as if an axe blade was really hitting a human body. Right. An arm may not be cut off right away with one hit. It may take a couple of whacks. Right. Right. That's impressive to me, special effects-wise. Special effects-wise, yeah, I would agree. Okay. Special effects-wise, yeah. yeah. Because we were talking about the kids' body parts in the bed, and you were mm -hmm. saying they look like fake limbs. But that's different. We is didn't that just see your it. mind? But no. is that just your mind telling you that they're fake? or Maybe. Well, I would say, I don't know, maybe those ones did look fake to me. But when we do see an actual like axe hit, it's real. Because we see the, like, that's body parts. Whatever. When we actually see it happen, it does yeah. look realistic. So, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it did look realistic. Like what, like the uh, the mom at the beginning in that Christmas sequence. Yeah. I think that's what it was. He, like, goes down with the axe on her arm, and you see it hit. And again, like you said, the arm doesn't come off. You just see, like, a. I mean, what would... I, I wouldn't know. I've never been there. But what you would think would happen when an axe actually hits an arm. I mean, it takes a chunk out. And then he goes back up to do it again. Yeah. And it's it's gruesome. Like, it really is. Like you, I mean, it's visceral, like you said. Right. Yeah. We have the scene in the bar, which, <laughs> God. Yeah. you know, our, to, to the movie's credit, he doesn't do the same exact thing to all three guys. He kills the first two pretty quickly. Which actually shocked me a little bit, that he pulls yeah. out a gun and just shoots them. Yeah. It which, was not very which, art. <laughs> which he did in the first movie. Right. No, it was art. You're right. You're right. That's true. I forgot about that. He does do that. You're right. That's um, how he kills Tara. You're right. I forgot about that. And Oh, yeah. And shoots her a lot. But I guess I kind of forgot that because of how crazy his kills are. That when he yeah. does do one where it's just a quick shot, you're like, oh, oh, that was okay. That was quick. <laughs> like you didn't. <laughs> Huh, weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it's weird <laughs> that you did a quick one. Uh, but yeah, you're right. He does. He shoots the first guy right in the head and then the... S no, in the neck? Neck. Neck. And then he shoots Clint Howard. Right, in, in the, the head. head. That's what it is. Yep. But yeah. then he ties up Daniel Roebuck, who yeah. was dressed as Santa, ties him up. And, you know, we, we have this scene where Art makes a big deal uh, of getting liquid nitrogen ready. Right. And this is, again, like we've seen liquid nitrogen tricks yes, in movies. Have. Yep. This felt, again, like you said, I've never seen anybody with liquid nitrogen and then <laughs> their body hit with a hammer. Yeah, I don't think many have, I hope. <laughs> but I feel like if this is, this is what it would more reasonably look like. Right. No, I agree. Because he first he freezes his legs... And he takes a, a big sledge or something to the guy's legs. And, yeah, it's not just like – like in other movies, I feel like the entire leg is frozen. And then you yep. see the pieces of that leg fly apart. You yeah, know? there's nothing there. Like it's gone. Right. But in this movie, it's basically only the outer shell of the leg, the skin, yeah. and maybe the, the first layers of, of whatever that get frozen – but the blood underneath the skin is still not frozen. Right. And the bone is still... And you still see the bone. Yep. It's gruesome. It is gruesome. And I, again, special effects wise, I'll absolutely, I'll give them props. Yeah. Yeah. Special effects, very well done. And like you said, yeah, more, I guess, yeah, realistic, I guess you would say. Because again, anytime we have seen liquid nitrogen, it, it explodes the leg or face or whatever. 
But this one, it it hurts just the first layer, and then you see everything underneath, and it's it's gruesome. Oh my god! And I, now I'm I'm going backwards in the movie mm-hmm. to when Art was killing one of the demolition guys. Oh, yep. And oh, yeah. trigger warning. There you go. Victoria is standing there in her dress oh. with oh. a shard of mirror and starts masturbating herself with the shard of mirror. Yeah. You don't see it, but you see what she's doing and you see blood just splattering all over the floor and it's just like, wow. I think that's going to be easier to watch in the second one just knowing for sure that she's just a demon. Right. And that the body is just a shell of this of husk that's holding this demon. Right. So, but it was but, still like that I was I was cringing a lot. Well, to me I was like, why? Like what's the point of this? Like I know it that one to, to me give I'll, you to give you that reaction, right? Exactly, there. which I'm like, okay, neat. I guess that's why, but it has no, I mean, that made me cringe. It was I was like, oh, my God, dude. To me, I was just like, what is the point of this? Like this. That's and the I, point. But, the point that, is to get a reaction. That's all it is. And that's exactly why I think I don't like these movies is because the whole point of them is to get a reaction. I'm like, OK, well, there's also a story which we've talked about, <laughs> which we have. But I mean, still, like, I feel like people go to these to get that reaction. It's like, really? OK. OK. But then let's jump to the scene of all scenes. The shower scene. Oh my gosh! Now you had you had a different reaction to the bedroom scene. I I feel like you were still like having fun with the bedroom scene in Terrifier Two. Yeah, nah. Even I don't though know. it was over the top, it was just like it was crazy and it was fun. Yeah, I don't know if fun's the right word, but it was crazy. No, it was fun. It was fun. Not for me, but it was <laughs> it was something no, fun. No, for you, yes. With horror. Nah, look at you. So we've got the shower scene, and as I said earlier, I had heard about it so i was really really wondering what was about to happen so they're they're the two young people jonathan's roommate and his girlfriend the podcaster Mm -hmm. are having the old sex in the shower (laughs) not that new stuff the old the old sex (laughs) art is peeing in the room next to him which also made me think a little bit like art pees yeah, yeah. Like he you're pees right. a couple times in this movie. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. interesting to me. Like I never thought of Art as having male sexual parts, you know, because Art does not do sexual assault. Which is kudos to Damien for yeah. not not going there. And I hope they never do. I yeah, hope to God they never do because that would why just don't just don't that would ruin these movies it that would you ruin. don't like already. Yeah, it would be yeah I'd, yeah. But but which is funny that he does pee because he sat in a chair for five years. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That it makes you wonder if he's just peeing just because he's being silly. Yeah, just as like I don't know, like just as a as a formality, as a as a show of whatever of like, hey, I can pee too, you know, and I'm just gonna pee while I take my time getting over to these people that I'm about to destroy. Well, and at, at one or a couple points, I almost feel like he breaks the fourth wall when he kind of looks at the camera, and maybe that was for our benefit. He didn't look at the camera. I thought the same thing, but oh, he, didn't had, he? he had glasses on. Oh, okay. He was okay. not looking at the camera. Because then I would say it was for our benefit that he's paying, just to give us a laugh. Ha ha. I think it's just know. to his benefit, just to play his part, because there are parts where he feels human. And mm. remember, in the first movie, he is a guy that puts on makeup. Oh, man, that's right. I think once he dies and comes back, he's now this demon. Right. That he's not just a man anymore, but he is still a human body. Right. In clown makeup. Right. That just never comes off now. Right. Anyway, so he ends up taking a chainsaw out of his bag of tricks, and then he goes to the shower stall. I mean, there's no other way to put it, but then he just, just... tears these two people apart with this chainsaw right yeah and it's even hard to describe it but it's like it's not it's not fast it's slow it yeah like he takes a limb off of one guy no he no no at the beginning that's all he does like he takes fingers off of him oh right yes takes his arm off i think cuts into his leg that was what i was thinking you were saying yeah yeah and then the funny part though funny Mm. quote unquote Funny, not ha-ha. 
<laughs> is that Art, and I thought this part was really funny. Art overheard the girl. He's yeah. standing behind the wall, and he overhears this girl talking to her boyfriend about the podcast and about Art the Clown. And Art is just making all of these like mime things. Oh, and I Andrew's know. rolling his eyes. I was laughing my ass off. I thought it was very awesome and funny. The only one I did think was funny was when she says something like, I'd never have sex with him or something like that. Yeah. And he does give a face where he's like, oh, like, yeah, that one did make me laugh. I thought that one was very Good. silly. So I'll Good. give him that one. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's right. I don't. You know what? I'll make enemies today. I don't care. <laughs> In person, Andrew's aggressive. I'm going to put a t-shirt on you at Monster Palooza that says, I didn't like Terrifier 3. That's a bad choice. Yes. Then I might get killed. Yeah. whole bunch of Art the Clown costumed guys are just going to tackle you. They West Side Story it. They come out snapping. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. It kind of would. What a way to go. When you're an art, you're an art till the end. <laughs> anyway, the, the coup de grace of this entire scene is, so this girl was like, I just want to know what it was like to be right next to him, to have his breath on you, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a moment before when she's just torn apart by this chainsaw and she can't do anything. And Art's just like right in front of her and he takes off his glasses. Well, and she even says, I want to know what's in his eyes. Can you see yeah. a soul or yeah. something? Yeah. And, and then he, he just goes. like looks at her and he's just like, like, I thought that was really well done. I did too. I actually did like that moment. And then, I mean, and she's, pretty She's brutalized at this point so she kind of looks and then dies you know it's well art puts his glasses on her he's got oh, these little yeah. christmas tree glasses and here's the part the only thing that surprised me in this movie well in a way in this way he puts the glasses on her mm -hmm. i honestly thought that he was going to embed the glasses into her flesh like oh no <laughs> yeah like, oh, no. he's already gone as far as he's gone why not right. go further but then the guy is trying to crawl away oh my Lord. And I even thought, is Art going to run this chainsaw up this guy's butt? And sure enough, Art does. <laughs> and it comes out of the guy's lower back. Then Art, either the guy turns over or Art turns the guy over and Camera. Art starts going up the other end. And yeah, you see the guy's bits getting torn apart by this yeah. chainsaw. Yep, you do. It's just a bloody mess. Right. It's this is, you know, Damien's going to have that scene in every movie. That's true. Yeah, he will always have it. Yeah. yeah. And this is that scene. Yes, for sure. I'm not going to lie. I love this scene. I thought it was just over the top brilliant. I think the other scenes that go almost as over the top, like that's what I think. I think some of the other kills should be a little bit faster. And then you mm -hmm. have this one centerpiece scene. Like in Terrifier 1, it was the hacksaw. Right. And Terrifier 2 is the bedroom scene. Right. And I felt those movies did well, where the other kills could were brutal. Right. But they were a little bit snappier. I would agree. Absolutely. I agree with that. Whereas in this movie, you have the shower scene as the centerpiece, but the other kills also took a long time. Like, Art takes his time with these people and does horrible things to them. Right. So. I agree. No, and I... And, you know, like I said, I think this movie could have been a lot shorter to me. Maybe just tighten those kills up, you know. Maybe. Ten minutes, ten minutes, not an hour. I'd then say an it hour. would have been an hour long. Wasn't but it you two, didn't it like... It felt like it was two and a half hours. No, it, it was two, two hours. Jeez. Man, it felt long. With the credits, it was even less. Oof. But I will say, I will say, okay, so like I said, I think this movie would have been better without the opening scene. Right. As fun as parts of it were. I will be honest, this is this is where I'm not going to lose people, but it's just going to be an unpopular opinion. Mm -hmm. I thought this movie felt a little bit longer than Terrifier 2, which was a longer movie. Terrifier 2 was almost yeah. two and a half hours. Sheesh. And I rewatched it this past week, and it does not feel long to me, even though it does to other people, and right. I understand that. The pacing of that movie, I just absolutely love. Mm-hmm. I love the Clown Cafe. Give me the Clown Cafe. I love oh, that scene. That's right. That you scene know? is very long, but and a lot of people complain about it. But the song, even though it's it's an odd song, it's kind of catchy. It is. <laughs> it's kind of catchy. You recognize it the moment you hear it in Terrifier Three. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Very much so. Yep. I also like that scene where Sienna's in the mall. Oh right. Okay. Because before this, this is another thing I was going to mention that I liked. Okay. 
there's a moment when Sienna is at a dinner table and she sees Brooke from Terrifier 2 all bloody at the dinner table and Brooke is talking to her. When you get to the mall scene, there is a moment where you're sitting there thinking, is is that really art or is she seeing things? Right. And it really was art. Right. And I like that. I like that they played with what's real and what's not or what's in Sienna's mind and what's not. Right. I agree. Actually, okay, I have a couple things. One, I'm going to jump back to what you just said about her friend at the dinner table. Brooke. Brooke, excuse me. I'm surprised you liked that. Because I know a lot of, not a lot of times, but we've talked a few times about when people see other people that aren't there, it can take you out of it. So I'm actually surprised that you were okay with that scene. But there was Sienna. Like, if everybody's seeing dead people, you know, Sienna's different. Sienna is supernatural. Right. So I, it's not like a normal person like Dexter, right. Right. who is talks to his dad all the time, right. you know. But Dexter is just a serial killer, you know. Right. Right. Sienna actually has some supernatural stuff, like she's died and come back. Right. Right. She's gone into hell and basically come back, you know. Which is a good segue for the other thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah. That's actually perfect. Is the dad her dad in it? Remind me, because I know he was. I know he was in the second one too. He was only talked about in the second okay, one. Okay, okay, he was only talked about. You're right. Yes. How? So did he? I don't get his whole thing. I know he's the artist and everything, but how did he know all this stuff was going to happen? Because even he's I like, I still think that's being explained. Okay. Because I'm like, what? How? What? Are you? What? <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Because we're told in the first movie that he killed himself. Or, I'm sorry, the second movie. Mm-hmm. We're told that he killed himself, but he also drew these pictures of Sienna. He foresaw this stuff happening. Mm-hmm. He was preparing her. And then we get more hints of that with, with actual flashbacks. Right. And then him walking into a room that is bordered with red. So right. it's almost like he was also battling the forces of hell. Right. And preparing his daughter to do the same. Yeah. So. I think that's just still being explained, but okay. we just got more hints of it. Okay. Because, I, yeah, I would, I'm curious what all that's about. Yeah, um, still being explained. Okay, that works then. Are you ready for three questions? Let's do it. All right. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. All right, buddy. Question number one. I'm going to ask you. This one's going to be interesting. What was the best or your favorite kill? Of this movie. What did I think was the best kill or death in this movie? Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, this is only episode two. That's right. <laughs> uh, shower scene. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's an easy one, mm-hmm. but I would say I thought it was the best. Uh, it, it, I knew something bad was going to happen, and it exceeded my expectations, mm-hmm. even then. And I almost kind of... Like, a lot of times, if I predict something that's going to happen and then it happens, I kind of don't like that. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that I was thinking, is Art going to shove this chainsaw up the guy's butt? And (laughs) Art did. Yeah. And I thought that was amazing. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the shower scene. All right. But even more interesting, Andrew, what did you think was the best kill or death in this movie? Honestly, because they're all just so a lot. I liked seeing Victoria die because I hated her. Okay, good. So her getting decapitated and then kind of becoming this portal to hell I thought was interesting. and uh, So I'm going with that. I okay, like that. Victoria. Yeah, and I like that she died. Good. Yeah, there you go. All right, question number two. Was this movie scary? I would say, actually, in ways, I do think this movie is a little scary. The fact that I get nervous when a guy dressed as Art the Clown sits behind me in a theater, even though that makes me nervous... I appreciate that the movie is able to make me feel that. I appreciate the fact that I don't honestly know where this movie is going to go as far as art and his kills. So Hmm. I was scared for certain characters. Hmm. Like, this movie did sit with me afterwards. Hmm. But it's not the kills. It's the lore behind the movie that sits with me. This demonic entity that Sienna is doing battle against, Mm -hmm. you know, that sits with me. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? I I don't think you do, right? No. no. Okay. I didn't think it was scary. <laughs> what do, but I agree with you. Like, it does scare me a little that, you know, some people might idolize him and yeah. start doing, like, I agree kind of with that, where 
that's a little scary. That's a little worrisome to me, which usually I don't have that worry with, like, if people, people love Michael, people love Freddie, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, of course. But something about art, when people, like, idolize him, it gets me a little nervous. Yeah. I don't know if I, I'm, that, yeah, that gives me, ner- that gives me nerves, for sure. Hmm. All right, question number three, buddy. Did you have fun with horror? I did. Nice. I did have fun, Andrew. Good. 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 Andrew, did you have fun with horror? Not even a bit, buddy. Not, <laughs> not even, not a, even bit. a bit. Not even a bit. No. Really? I mean, here's what I'll say. I had fun because I got to go see a movie with two of my buddies. That's fun. There wasn't a single part of that movie that was fun to you? No. Honestly, yeah, no. You were just in agony for two hours. Kind of. Like, again, I'm having fun with my buddies, which is great. I haven't been... That's not... that. Yeah, okay. I, that, but except for the people behind valid. us, too. They sucked. But I really, honestly, I don't... You're not a Terrifier fan anymore. I'm not. I do, well, and I don't... I wasn't before. I feel like I kind of almost, too, thinking back on it, hyped up the other ones a little bit. But I really... I don't like... See, and I want to go back and listen to our old episodes, because I'm wondering if I have rose-tinted glasses about what you said about these movies. Like... Am I imagining you liking them more than you did? Maybe. You know? I don't know. And I and you know, part of me I feel like I maybe being in person I have I'm more confident of what I say. I don't know. Because I feel like in the other ones maybe I was a little bit more lenient, and that's because I was nervous possibly about what people would think. So I'd be more nervous now because now this movie's even more popular. I guess the confidence is building up in me. Who knows? Wow. But I, yeah, I just... Wow. I I truly do not care if I ever watch any of these movies again, buddy. Period. Wow. Who is this Santa? He's scaring my kid. Yeah. He's scaring me, too. Hey, Santa's handing out presents. Okay, buddy. That right. was my pick. I picked Terrifier 3. That was my pick. <laughs> Your pick is going to – this is your pick. <laughs> wow. So good. <laughs> yeah. And I guess what I was going to say is that this is going to release two days before Halloween. This is going to release on October 29th. Oh, boy. We may or may not have an episode on October 31st. We're going to try mm-hmm. to have two episodes, but not to put too much pressure on you. But what is your pick for our next movie, Andrew? Well, now I'm nervous. because Don't I, be nervous. I, just pick it. All right. <laughs> well, it's one I've wanted to see. And I do know that uh, it, it had a lot of buzz. A lot of people were talking about it. And I know that I know you've seen it, but yeah. I have not. And that is 2024's Long Legs. All right. Long Legs. Yeah. I'm so curious about this movie. And I know... I I have a feeling it probably doesn't take place on Halloween. I don't really know anything about this movie. But you know what? It's a horror movie, and I want to see it. That's also debatable. But we'll oh, talk about it. Okay. Hopefully this was the right pick. <laughs> no, it's, it's of course it's the right pick. Okay, good. I mean, Toy Story 3 would have been the right pick, because it's your pick. Oh, thanks, see? buddy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an interesting podcast. That was... Very interesting. Wow. I'm really, but again, I kind of, we've talked about this a little bit where uh, there's many times where we have the same thoughts, same opinions, which is great, but it is kind of fun to have a differing opinion because I do feel like we get some really good conversation out of it. And I feel like this, this one was fun to me. I mean, they're all fun, but I don't know. Something just was different about this one because we have that difference. Like, it's just kind of fun to go have that back and forth. So I liked it. Wow. I had fun with you with this, buddy. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I have fun too. It's interesting to me that you said what you said about feeling maybe more confident about your opinion <laughs> in person rather than through Zoom or a, a computer. Yeah. Like, why is that? I, I feel I like know. with with a with a barrier between us, you'd feel even more confident about your choices. I don't know. And maybe it's not that. I don't know. I just was spitballing. I don't know. I mean, and maybe it's just because we've done this for a while and I'm like, all right, here we go. I don't know. I, but I just felt like, especially this this movie, I don't want to sh- I didn't want to sugarcoat it, you know? I don't I know there's people that love these movies and I that's great. Well, you did it without insulting anybody and that that's was, that's and, the important part. And I don't I don't mean to insult anybody. That's not my you didn't. goal. Good. Okay. You and didn't. I, <laughs> I hope no one is listening and they're like, "I'm insulted." Cuz I that uh, was not the goal. But I I just I no, feel I mean like, as 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 two people 
that discuss movies, mm-hmm. we got to be honest. That's the thing. And we can be honest without crapping all over a movie. Right. And that's what we try to do. Right. Because our opinion is nothing. It's just our opinion. Right. Exactly. Like, who cares? Yep. We're just a podcast. You know, I, I haven't said this, I don't think, on the podcast, but I saw the funniest joke, and I, it actually made me laugh. And I saw, I saw a lot of podcasters get stupidly offended by this, but somebody said this joke, what do you call a man mansplaining to another man? <laughs> a, and what? a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that made me laugh. Like, I thought that was hilarious because it's so true. So, uh, yeah, I think that's funny. Like, we're just two guys talking into the air and hoping that people find it entertaining. Totally. That's exactly you right. Know, if you listen to our opinions, like, I don't want people to listen to our opinions and base their own opinions on ours. I want people Agreed. to make up their own opinions. I 100% agree. Absolutely. You know, take what we say with a grain of salt. Enjoy what we say. Yep. It's like Roger Ebert, my hero, basically. Mm-hmm. I didn't agree with a lot of his opinions, but I love the way he talked about his opinions. I agree. No, and I mean, we're, we're here to entertain, man. We're here yeah. to have fun. It's just entertainment. That's it. Plain and simple. And the fact is, is we love all of you. We do love all of you. We love our listeners. We love our listeners so thank you everybody for listening our next episode is going to be a special bonus episode in which i sat down with our friend justin beam of reverend entertainment and talked to him about what he does and about specifically one of the movies that he created bonus features for gretel and hansel that'll be next week and then the week after that the week of halloween it's only two weeks away the week after that, we'll be back talking about long legs. Yay. And, and then, I, oh, I was just going to say, I haven't actually even heard the Justin Beam episode, so I am so excited. Yeah, it's I'm really so good. Excited. It was really, really good conversation. So yeah, and then hopefully, if everything goes well, we will have a bonus episode for you on Halloween. We can't make promises just yet, but we're hoping. Yes. We're very hoping and we're going to try and make that happen. So Andrew, I love you. Scotty, I love you. Everybody out there, we love you. We love you. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. he was alive which he isn't when you want to get as far away from here as possible as far away from you we both know this isn't over 